Here we're going to be looking at an impairment of a receivable and it's going to be for a notes receivable that's impaired. And for example here, Corporation A signs a $10,000 three-year note to Bank B on 1231X1. Now the note has an interest rate of 10% here. That's the stated rate of interest here in a note, has a 10% stated rate of interest. While the note of similar risk has a market rate of interest of 12%. Corporation A's financial situation worsened. At the end of year one, Bank B determined that it was probable that Corporation A would pay back only $6,000 of the $10,000 principal amount that was owed. However, it was considered likely that the interest would be continued to be paid on this $10,000 note, or they would be paying the 10% interest on this $10,000 note. So first we have to determine uh, uh, what, how we'd record this notes receivable to determine uh, the impact impairment here in this note. So uh, we would, based on the effective interest rate here of 12%, uh, we would use the market rate of interest of 12% versus the stated rate of here of interest of 10%. And what we have to do here is we have to determine the present value of the principal and the present value of the interest payment. So first for the present value of the principal, we have a $10,000 amount here discounted back at the beginning of the period here for three years at the 12% interest rate and the present value of that principal would be $7,117. Now for the present value of those interest payments. Again, uh, we would have those $1,000 interest payments. That was the um, $10,000 amount of note here times the 10% stated interest rate here on the note uh, for $1,000 payments here. So uh, the $1,000 payments here discounted back at the end of the period they received at the end of each period, discounted back here for three years at the 12% interest rate here, the market rate of interest. So the present value of these interest payments are $2,401. So adding that to the present value of the principal, $7,117, gives us a total present value of this note receivable here of $9,520. So uh, subtracting that here from the face value of the note of $10,000 uh, gives us a discount amount here of $480. So that's what we have to amortize here, this discount amount here of $480. So here we're just going to use the effective interest method. And again, that's based here on the 12% market rate of interest for this note. So for our amortization schedule, and all we have to do it is for year one here, because it, at the end of year one, because it's this note becomes impaired at the end of year one here. So uh, a cash received, those are for those interest payments. That was 10% interest payment on a $10,000 note. So we would record a $1,000 payment here for at the end of year one. Now, the next thing we have to do is we have to determine the interest revenue here on this note. So we start out with our carrying amount here in a note, and that's the discounted amount here of $9,520. Take that times the 12% interest rate or the market rate of interest. That gives us interest revenue for year one here at $1,142. Subtracting that here or subtracting the cash received on that uh, payment amount from $1,142 here, the $1,000 from $1,142 gives us a discount that we'd amortize here at $142. So adding that to the beginning carrying value here of this note of $9,520 gives us the carrying amount here of $9,662. Now that's at the end of year one and that's at the impairment date here of this note or this loan. So next let's go and let's do our calculation here for the loan impair or for our loan impairment or calculation. So for our loan impairment the loan impairment loss is calculated as the difference between the investment and the loan generally the principal plus the accrued interest and the expected cash flows discounted at the loan's historical effective interest rate. And in this case it's that 12 percent or this market rate of interest. So for our loan impairment impairment here at the end of year one. So Corporation A is going to pay back those the $6,000 principal amount here and continue to pay interest based on the $10,000 note here. So that interest here is based on that 10% stated rate of interest on the note here times the $10,000 um, note here. Uh, and the interest payment for each year here would be 10% times the $10,000 interest. So we get a $1,000 interest payment 
per year here on this note. So there's two years remaining on this note here. So the first year was impaired. It's a three-year note. So here is where we have to calculate our impairment, and that's based on the two years remaining on the note. So first off, we have to determine the present value of this $6,000 principal amount that it's going to be received here. And again, this is based on that market rate or the historical rate of interest here of 12%. So we discount the $6,000 um, present value or the principal amount here back back and again this is at the beginning of the period here discounted back here for two years at 12 percent the present value of the principal is forty seven hundred and eighty three dollars now next for the present value of those interest payments and we got two of those interest payments and again that's based on the ten percent interest on the note here so uh, we discount that back here those interest payments at twelve percent again so discounting a thousand dollar payments uh, back here for two years at uh, 12 percent interest rate gives a, and, and again this is at the end of the period each of those interest payments are received at the end of the period so the present value of those interest payments is sixteen hundred and ninety dollars so adding that to the present value of the principal of 4783 gives us our present value of our uh, future cash flows here at sixty four hundred and seventy three dollars and that is what we're going to be using here for our loss due to our impairment here. So we take our carrying value of the note at the end of year one. That was $9,662 that we calculated off our amortization schedule here. And then we would subtract the present value of those future cash flows of $6,473. That's the amount that we calculated up here. Subtracting, taking the difference between those two amounts here, uh, $9,662 less the $6,473 gives us a loss due to impairment here of $3,198. So next we'll go and we'll look at how we'd record this loss here for the impairment on the balance sheet and on our income statement. Now let's look at how we'd record this impaired loan as a notes receivable and we'll look at it from bank B the lenders perspective here so first for our amortization schedule here remember the beginning of balance here was ninety five hundred and twenty dollars that was the present value of that notes receivable and then the impair at the end of the year one when it was impaired the carrying amount here was ninety six hundred and sixty two dollars and then we received the cash payment here for the first year of a thousand dollars and the interest revenue was eleven hundred and forty two dollars which included this cash payment here of a thousand dollars plus this discount amount here amortized of hundred forty two dollars and the total amortization here or discount on this notes receivable was four hundred and eighty dollars so now let's look at how we'd record it here uh, for bank B recording the notes received prior to the impairment here so they would have paid out the present value of this notes receivable here of ninety five hundred and twenty dollars to corporation a and then they would have received a thousand dollar uh, payment here for that first interest payment so that would increase their cash account here for a thousand dollars then they would have recorded a notes receivable for that loan amount here of ten thousand dollars and then the discount on notes receivable they would have credited that or increased that for four hundred eighty dollars and then the first year's discount here was rec or a discount amortization amount here of hundred forty two dollars was recognized and that would be recorded here as interest revenue of hundred forty two dollars plus we had that interest payment here of a thousand dollars now look at uh, bank B how would they record this loan artist notes receivable for the impairment here so we'd have to set up here an allowance account or this would be a contra account to our notes receivable so we'd credit it here for thirty one hundred and ninety eight dollars that was the amount of loss that we calculated here and then the debit amount here would go to a bad debt expense here on the income statement for this impaired loan here of thirty one hundred and ninety eight dollars and then to note here uh, for corporation a the debtor they make no entry for this loan here at the for the impairment because they are still legally owing ten thousand dollars here on this note so they didn't make any entry here for the impairment here of this loan or this note it would be a notes payable in their case and then to summarize here our notes receivable we had a ten thousand dollar we have a ten thousand dollar amount here in this notes receivable we amortized hundred and forty two dollars for the first year and then we recognize this allowance or this loss here of thirty one hundred and ninety eight dollars so the difference here gives us a balance of six thousand six hundred and sixty dollars 
Now, we're going to get the $6,000 payment that's estimated here, and then the remaining amount here has to be amortized of the remaining balance between the payment of $6,000 and the balance here of $6,660.